computer in my brain. You too, huh? Yes. Ready for a lab PC build? We start out with a touch of cinematic drama because it was a beautiful day and in order to psych ourselves up for the build and because Remote Labs East dared us to. First, the name, Cubic Heavy Open Number Center, was suggested by one of our Qualcomm volunteers who said we had to use the asterisks like Whopper from the movie War Games. Jumping to the end, here's the fancy BIOS screens showing that things are working. Here's all the colorful LEDs blinking away. We can program these to do a variety of things. They can simply be decorations, or they can track a wide variety of things going on in the computer. All these lights are visible because the case has glass sides. Here's the back with some of the cable routing. This is before the glass doors went back on. Chonk has all the usual I.O., and you can see a lot of it here in this image. We plan to put the DVB-S2X modulator and demodulator cards in here. There probably will not be a lot else hooked up to Chonk through the traditional ports. After memory tests and other checks, we installed Unraid. What is Unraid? It's an operating system built based on Linux for storing and managing data. You can freely mix and match drives of different sizes and speeds. We install applications within a container system and manage application access to the network and data. We're going to run virtual machines from Unraid, allowing us to set up different machines for different tasks. Unraid is efficient, fast, and allows virtual applications to be dedicated to physical hardware. Unraid is common in the gaming community. It lets you maximize your computer system to be a high-end gaming computer and a home PC at the same time. Here's Paul describing some of the challenges with Unraid setup. Unraid is a software layer that installs on standard PC hardware and hosts virtual machines, which might be Windows or Linux or whatever, and Docker containers and manages the disk drives the same sort of way a network-attached storage device would do. At one level, Unraid is just a customized installation of Linux, but it's also a high-performance, hardware-assisted hypervisor that achieves performance nearly as good as the bare metal. It's also a very flexible storage manager that can turn an array of physical disk drives into any number of shares that look like network disk drives to the virtual machines and containers. Much of it is open source, but some of it is proprietary, so it costs a few dollars to install. The idea here is to build one big, powerful PC, run Unraid on it, and then create any number of virtual machines and containers in all the configurations you might need. If you fully embrace Unraid, you'll set up each job in a separate VM or container, optimized for the needs of that job. Various jobs might need completely different OS configurations, and that's no problem. Thanks to virtualization, they won't interfere with each other much if you set it up right. Unraid wants to manage all the disk drives on the host PC as one big array, but it still needs something to boot up from. Unraid's solution is to boot from a USB thumb drive. The performance of the thumb drive isn't critical because Unraid copies it into RAM right away. It only uses the thumb drive to save configuration information for when the system is restarted never for user data or anything big. So the thumb drive just needs to be a few gigabytes and compatible with booting the PC, either BIOS or UEFI. Oh, and one other thing, Unraid ties your software license to the unique ID code in the thumb drive as a form of copy protection. The catch here is that cheap thumb drives don't necessarily have a UUID, so you have to buy a name brand thumb drive. The first thumb drive I tried was a name brand, but it was a little older and it was almost compatible. It had a UUID, and it would boot the PC on initial power-up. I was able to install Unraid and do some initial configuration with this thumb drive. However, I soon discovered that rebooting the system from software didn't work. The machine would instead boot to the BIOS screen and sit there forever. It didn't recognize the thumb drive on a reboot. That would be a problem for the remote lab, so I switched to a newer thumb drive. Unraid does allow you to switch to a different thumb drive, but the automatic procedure for doing that only works once a year. Luckily, the new drive did work correctly, including reboots. The specification for Chonk, the ORI West Remote Lab PC, and for its counterpart in the ORI East Remote Lab, 
called for four huge 16 terabyte drives each. Unfortunately, two of the drives were dead on arrival and have not been replaced yet, so Chunk was built up with only two large disk drives. Unraid can use them both for data, or it can use one of the drives to hold parity data for recovery of the array from a single drive failure. We opted for reliability, so I told Unraid to initialize parity data on one of the drives. It turns out that 16 terabytes of a parity data is quite a lot of work. It took about 22 hours to initialize the array. When the two replacement drives arrive, it will probably take a while to add them to the array as well. Now this is only 2021 and we don't have an infinite budget, so these 16 terabyte drives are the old fashioned kind with spinning disks and mechanically moving heads. To speed up the random access performance of the array, Unraid supports using smaller SSD drives as a cache for the array. We have two one terabyte NVMe SSDs for this purpose, and the motherboard has room for three to install. With integrated cooling, enabling these as cache for the array was just a few clicks and a short wait. Unraid's primary user interface is through web pages, which you can bring up from an internal VM or from another machine with access to the local network. One of the useful screens is a dashboard status display, and one of the things you can monitor on that screen is the temperature of the CPU and disk drives. When idle, the spinning disk drives run pretty cool, but the cache SSDs are over 50 degrees C, despite the integrated heatsink and fan cooling provided by the motherboard. I'll have to keep an eye on that. The consensus seems to be that SSDs actually work better when they're warm, so maybe it's okay. On the other hand, the manufacturer only rates these SSDs up to about 70 C. Chonk also features a high-end graphics card, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080. No, we're not planning on mining Bitcoin, or playing the latest video game at a high frame rate with the highest graphics settings, but we could. No, the graphics card is for developing and testing signal processing code for DVB-S2X, or other applications. I don't know yet exactly what's involved, but I'm betting there's no support for virtualizing the GPU for this kind of computation. Unraid supports a hardware-based solution for this type of problem. Any device on the PCIe bus can be mapped exclusively to one virtual machine. It's as if the device didn't exist at all on the main machine, or in any other VM. The VM that owns the device can treat it as if it had direct access to the hardware, which it effectively does. Graphics cards, in fact, are the most common use case for mapping PCIe devices to VMs because gamers are a big part of Unraid's customer base. Games for the PC usually run on Windows, so to run them in Unraid, you need a Windows VM. Games make extensive use of the GPU, and gamers push them to the very limit. A game running in a Windows VM needs direct access to the GPU for best performance. There is, of course, a catch. Unraid, like any other operating system running directly on PC hardware, generally expects to have a display card. Now, the BIOS has a way to choose which of multiple display cards belongs to the main console. The usual approach would be to designate the onboard graphics or a secondary uh, inexpensive graphics card as the console, and that would free up the fancy GPU for whatever else you needed to do with it. The motherboard that we use in Chonk doesn't have any onboard graphics, and we didn't think to purchase a second graphics card. Now, it is possible to boot Unraid and still have the one and only graphics card uh, mapped to a VM. But it isn't at all straightforward. Uh, there are lots of tricks and magic words you have to say. With the help of various tutorial pages on the web and videos on YouTube, I was able to come up with a combination that works on Chonk. I frankly don't know which of the things I tried worked and which didn't, so I won't try to detail them here. But I did succeed in finding a combination that allows Chonk to run a Windows 10 VM that owns the RTX 3080. To test this, I installed Steam, which is a system for distributing games, and I used it to install a video benchmark program. The Windows VM was able to run the benchmark with flawless video and excellent measured performance. I hope this means that GPU programming tools will be able to run on the system as if running on standard hardware. Only one VM at a time can own the GPU, but it is possible to shut down the VM that owns the GPU and boot up another one, so it also owns the GPU, one at a time. Thus, if the GPU programming tools need a Linux VM instead of a Windows VM, that should still be possible. All the other VMs, the ones that don't own the GPU, don't have access to any physical display card. 
Instead, Unraid provides them with a virtual display card. It looks like an ordinary graphics card to the VM, but instead of looking at a screen, the user has to access the virtual display through the network using VNC protocol. The user can run VNC from the local VM if it does have a physical display, or from any other machine on the local network, or even elsewhere on the internet over the VPN or SSH tunnel. If graphics emulation is not needed, remote access can be managed with a simple terminal emulation scheme over SSH. Chonk lives on the private LAN at the ORI West Remote Lab. Everybody who had remote access to the temporary Windows machine called Aperture now has equivalent access to the Windows VM on Chonk. Linux VMs can be created on demand, customized to the need of any particular remote lab use. We look forward to helping remote lab users create exactly the testing environment they need to make best use of the lab resources.